everybody. Welcome to Designing with Quatrain. We're live today as we had technical difficulties last week if some of you were unable to join us. So we're doing a makeup show with Leva and she was kind enough to return. Yay had, for me. <laughs> yes, it was such a fabulous show last week. We actually had a live audience, so we were pretty excited about that. Anyway, um, we're so glad that you could join us this week again. Good to and see Leva, welcome. Thanks for having me again, Leslie. It's a pleasure to sit here and chat with you. What a nice way to spend the evening. Great, thank you. So um, we're going to backtrack a little bit and kind of cover some of the same territory. Sure. Um, so why don't you tell everybody about your background and how you came to Austin? How I came to Austin? I um, grew up mostly in Europe. I kind of spent time as a child between the two continents. My, uh, my parents are both Europeans and uh, I come from a very creative bunch, I have to say. Um, my father uh, was a, um, a pianist and uh, always loved music. It was, I mean, there was a piano in our house from when I was itty bitty. And my mother um, participated in the arts and fostered the arts and came from an artistic family. And we ended up in Austin, uh, mostly by choice, actually. My husband and I married a Norwegian and we had moved around quite a bit and he wanted to try living in the US. So we moved to this side of the pond and lived here for a little while and we're about to go back to Europe when we said, let's try one more place. So we listed the important criteria to us in terms of raising our children and Austin was top on the list and here we are. Wow, that's and very great. happily so. Yeah, yes. great Good story, time. love yeah. that. So, and what made you decide to open up a design firm here? I actually started my business in Virginia. I moved my business from Virginia to Texas when we moved, when we made that last move. I got into interior design um, very fluidly, I suppose. It's something that I've done my whole life in a way. From when I was a child, like I said, I was always put in these environments where um, my space was very much my own. And I think that today, so many people, if you, if you think about, you know, where are you your happiest, it, it's, it's in your own little space. And for, for children, that really means their room. And for adults, right. it hopefully means their whole house. So for me, I was always rearranging. I started boarding school very early. So I always had a space that I had to kind of make my own. Um, and um, I did have a corporate career before this, but all throughout my life in college and, and as I was a, you know, a young professional, people always ask me to help them with their spaces. It's something I enjoy doing. It's something that, you know, comes fairly naturally to me. And it just evolved into a business, which is a wonderful way to start a company because when you are kind of pushed through and, you know, supported by friends and friends mm -hmm. of friends and it kind of grows organically, um, it's, it's been a privilege. So, yes. Okay, and why don't you talk a little bit about turnstile design in terms of how it evolved and developed and, you know, what, from where it started to where it is now and how many people are involved and so on. You know, we've grown to a team of about seven people. Um, we love the fact that we are small. That is a very big part of the philosophy of the business. I um, like the fact that we can keep things personal and intimate. So our goal is never really to get to be too large. Uh, we, we, we love being more of a boutique firm. You know, we consider it a privilege to go into somebody's home, a very personal space, and, and, and help them find their footing. So we never really want to lose that. Um, how Turnstile has evolved over the years is, of course, I mean, many-fold, right? But essentially, the business has stayed the same. At the core, the philosophy has always been this kind of artistic bent toward interior design, really making a space unique really making it kind of turned on its head, hence the name Turnstile and, and not leave us either, which is not only difficult to pronounce for some, but uh, it also isn't really uh, about me in that sense. It's more about how can we take something and use it uniquely and, and give homeowners the opportunity to feel completely at ease in their space and really have it reflect who they are as individuals. And we don't always know that, right? I mean. We sometimes forget it, I should say. We, we kind of, it's wonderful when we buy a home, we get there, we're all excited, and then, you know, we forget that we loved collecting something over the years, or we don't quite know how to put ourselves out there or to translate the quirks into our space. So 
So we're here to we're here to do that. We're really here to get to know our clients and pull it out and make a house playful and approachable and fun. And I think you know the audience needs to know how talented you are because oh, you. Leva has the capability, and actually she often does. She makes finishes that are custom um, paintings. We and, do love to do that. Yeah, I have seen pictures. Oh, it's thank pretty you. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it is. You know, I, I think at the core of my being, I am really uh, an, artist. an artist, and yeah. I I think there are many schools of thought that need to be pursued in terms of interior design. And I believe in them all, I have to say, because I think the path is very unique for each person. But I will say that from my personal perspective, I feel like it is a very innate thing. Um, style, taste, uh, being able to be color aware, being able to play with materials and juxtaposition and how a space flows and what you experience, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that is something that is, gain through experience and and through you know your own innate understanding but um i love to get my hands dirty and i for me it's a complete pleasure to get back to my roots of painting and you know being able to do all of those tactile things we burnish a lot of our own brass uh in our office we um we we love to make spaces where there's a an interesting piece where we've used it in a different way unexpectedly and take it apart put it back together but in a very luxe way we don't do craft. We do it very high end. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I was noticing. It's very. Yeah. It was more of an artist type of finish rather than um, I don't know arts and crafts, as right. you were saying. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah, yeah. It has to be editorial. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, a wonderful service to be able to work with an interior designer. And so, you know, we it's want fun, to, work, isn't it? It oh, is yeah, really it's totally fun. fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, we hopefully help people get get it right the first time. I mean, that's the main goal, right? Mm -hmm. I think so many people uh, are excited to buy a home and, uh, like I said earlier, get there and aren't quite sure because it's an overwhelming process. Don't you think? It can be, yeah, mm -hmm. and I think that's part of our job is to make it sim more simpler, and that's why I was talking about the fun, is to make it really fun for the client so that they, you know, just have a good time, and it brings, actually, when you make it fun, it brings out that special part of them that really completes the, Couldn't agree yeah. more. Yeah, yeah, this is very true, and it, it's, 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 a, it's an interesting thing because I've seen it happen so many times where people will buy a house, and they will you know, start with one piece and get excited about that piece and then start to hesitate about what the second piece is and then buy something on a whim because they feel frustrated that they need it and then there's a third piece and then everything in isolation, you kind of feel overwhelmed even more and you're not sure. So so just to your point, helping find the individual story and helping them to get those components mm -hmm. right the first time because I will say it is incredibly important to recognize that each piece that you put in a home is I mean, it's linked to the other one. So you can't really have these things in isolation. They have to be connected or they have to be unified. Unified. Yes. Yes. I totally a home agree. is a holistic process. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. And so what do you see as the next design trend coming to Austin? Austin, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because in all the places I've lived, and I've lived in many corners of the world, Texas is one of the places that I find the most difficult to kind of put in a box in terms of a style. Yes, we've got a rustic style. We've got a love for, you know, ranches and, and, and the, the great outdoors Spacious. and our history and our Americana. Yes. Mm. But spaciousness, spaciousness exactly. Mm -hmm. But if you think about what's happening in the condos downtown or um, in all the wonderful restaurants that we're fortunate to have here because we do have great food, um, I think it's a lot of that kind of modern take, contemporary take on rustic Texas, you know, uh, a lot of texture, a lot of um, uh, natural materials mixed in with harder materials. And that, that, that's, that's what I kind of see happening here. But wh where I think trends are going are absolutely toward, toward pattern and color. I mean, of course, I'm biased toward that because that's what we're known for. We love to play with pattern. But I'm seeing people embrace it more and more. And it's actually a very pleasurable thing to watch people get excited about daring to do a little bit more color. It's a good thing. Speaking of which, yes. <laughs> uh, Quatrine has just received its brand new color palette in all of our fabrics. Yes. And Very we have stuff. some beautiful stuff. You do. Beautiful yeah. fabrics, yes. Thank you. So, uh, Leva has kindly offered to do a pillow design. Which is always fun. Yeah. 
Yeah. So why don't you take over, Lipa, and just show us what you're going to put together? Yeah, so you um, were kind enough to give me a much larger stack of fabrics. And uh, I, when I choose fabrics, it's almost like asking somebody to, you know, or asking me to choose my children. That doesn't work. I, I love a lot of patterns and for different reasons. I kind of make choices based on a lot of historical context. Uh, you know, I mean, I have a huge art history background, so for me, there is a there's a reason why a pattern is such or a color or so forth. And then, of course, there's the functionality, the look, the feel, what it needs to be used for. So, again, in the interest of playing with pattern, I fell in love with this. Fabric. I know, isn't that one awesome? This is gorgeous. Can you all see this? Yeah, it's got uh, it's got actually silver tones. Everybody, um, when you put it into the light. There's actually silver embedded in the gray here. And it's, it's very pretty. It's beautiful. And so this this kind of ethereal quality that comes out of here, but this this moodiness that comes from this this color, I often say, and it's 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 may seem a little silly, but there are colors that are flat and there are colors that have a little bit more profundity. They are deeper colors. They are colors that change with the light and with, you know, how you play with them. And this color here is one of those. So I would see this as the main body of a, mm -hmm. of a great pillow. I think that would be fantastic. And I'm imagining probably a Euro. I think a large Euro sham would be fantastic in this with a kind of contrast border in this fabric because, again, Oh, I love to um, let me see if I yeah, can totally set this up a little bit better for you guys. Um, you know, I love to play with the with the contrast of pattern, as I mentioned. So I think this kind of edging that out would be beautiful. And then you know, playing with a welt, mm -hmm. playing with some beautiful contrast on the bias just to trim that out. And that's a little bit tougher to hold up for you all. So forgive me here, but if we can. Have that peek out. Let's see if I can do it this way. We can actually get you a pillow. Yeah, that's, like to that's lay it on the pillow. Well, let's see here. I'm gonna hold it up for the camera and see if you guys see that pillow right next. So, to something along these lines. Can you see that? Yes. It's kind yeah. of hard to hold here. I, something like that. Ah, uh -huh, that's really fun. Isn't that fun yeah, and interesting? Yeah, totally fun. And what's what's great about this is that it allows you to have um, this multitude of texture through color. Even though these are all you know, cotton linens and they feel the same and they're great on a bed, if we're going mm -hmm. back to the idea of a Eurosham, you, you wanna touch them, but they'll give some visual treat to your eye and draw your eye around. And that's a key thing in a space. You really want the eye to move around. You want to be able to assess a space, even though you're not conscious of it, that's how you'll experience a room fully, is when you walk in and you kind of dart around and take it all in. So great fabrics. I know one thing that um, the Quatrine does really well also is you guys do a lot of ribbon detailing. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it, there's nothing better than a good grow grain ribbon. So mm -hmm. you guys have a plethora of colors. I don't know if you all can see this, but that might be nice to mix in with something like this too. Great. Gorgeous. Very excited for you guys. Yeah, thank yes. you so much. That's great. Yeah. yeah, we're really excited about having all of the new fabrics in. So if you haven't been in, I definitely would recommend that you come in soon because we're also getting in some new furniture and so we're gonna have a brand new look in about a week. Good, good, yeah, good, good. Great. nice way to kick off summer. Yeah, so um, what would be your, your advice for other designers in Austin? You know, giving advice to those that are just starting out in the field, you know, that are looking to make their way. You know, that's such a great time. When, when people are just starting out in this business, I mean, it's, it's a wonderful thing. And I, 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 I think that I would tell younger designers to, to really take the time to go through many experiences and many projects and get it wrong. I think um, we underestimate a lot these days the value of failure. And I think if you are a young designer trying to start your own business, going through the failures is pretty key in order to have it be a success on the other end. So that's the first thing I would say. I think the other thing is allow your taste to be defined over somewhat of a period of time. I think a lot of young designers come into it thinking that they have a certain aesthetic and they kind of go at it, you know, all cylinders on. And that may be the case at that point, but I am certain that it will evolve again through that experience. So I think just be open to yourself kind of shifting a little bit. Um, I think it's it's a wonderfully exciting time for young designers because there's so much out there and there is so much uh, more and awareness. Access. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Awareness access. and education and access. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, you know, that kind of ability to be playful mm -hmm. is a really wonderful thing. And something, somebody that's young, you know, don't forget to tap into your fearlessness. That's pretty important. So yeah. have fun with it for yeah. sure. Great yeah. advice. Yeah. It's, it's nice to be so young now, and starting out. I know. It's an exciting it. time. So turning the tables, what would you say was the greatest piece of advice you ever received? Oh, that's a good question. I would say I've, I've received many good pieces of, of advice, but I think one of the earlier ones, when I was at that point where, as I said, you know, even in college, people were asking me to help them with their spaces. And when I was starting to kind of build the confidence to eventually start the business, I had a friend say to me, uh, in, in very simple terms, just jump off. And I thought, well, this is ridiculous. And I remember <laughs> saying to her, because she was younger than me, and I said, well, that's so simplified that that doesn't make any sense. And I kind of, you know, was somewhat dismissive. And when I thought about it for a minute, she was essentially right. And and that whole, out of that whole point is just to jump off. You're never going to get it all perfect. You need to just get in there and back to my earlier point, get your hands dirty and get into the experience of it. Figure out the crux of it. Figure out what you can contribute to this field. It is very much of a, a, a trade, in my opinion. It is something that you really have to understand all the facets of, like any other profession. Mm -hmm. But when you're young, you know, that's what you want to do. Get your hands dirty. And that is something that I really appreciated, having somebody tell me, um, a wiser, younger person than I, um, just to jump off. And once I jumped off, you know, it was exciting because I got to go and do the things that I had in my head. So, okay. Yeah. Well, um, we do have a live studio audience today, so I'm going to ask them if there's any questions from studio audience. Also, um, we are live, and so we'll see if we've gotten any live questions from uh, our live feed on Facebook. Yes. Okay. Good. All right. So who would like to go first? So I'm currently looking for a new house, actually. Okay. Um, Congratulations. That's very exciting, too. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Um, and I am, I've got a few options. I have to go look at three of them again. Um, but I've narrowed it down to three, and I'm just kind of trying to decide what is the best one for me. Right. How do I go into a space and know what's good for me and what's good for my family and who's staying in this home for the long run? Because it's a huge decision to make. It is. It's often your biggest. So how, without a designer's eye, do I know how to do that? It's a great question. And, you know, people are often so daunting. I mean, it's a very daunting process. It's a it's an overwhelming thing. And more often than not, when one is buying a home, one doesn't have the luxury of time. It's, you know, condensed. You've got to decide because school starts in two weeks. In Austin. Exactly. It's, it's, a, it's a very yeah, boisterous hard, market. Yeah. yeah, that's very true. So, you know, I think the important thing is to make a list beforehand, you know, get together with your partner and figure out what your priorities are. And, and even though that sounds fairly obvious, you would be amazed at how, how few people actually sit down and do it. Um, I think it's important to just be able to articulate, you know, what you're going for in a house and, and, and aim for the lifestyle you're trying to achieve, right? I mean, you have to be a little bit forward thinking because a home is typically something that you keep for a long time. So, um, you know, be conscientious, of course, of purchasing something with good bones and so forth. Uh, you know, we have a service that we, we love and have gotten great feedback on from our clients where we... Uh, go with a realtor, we either pair with a realtor or with a client directly and help narrow down two or three homes. Uh, sometimes it's even just one home that's, that's on the docket, but they just, there's something that they're unsure of or not clear on, and we can just walk through and very quickly assess what the potential is of the home. Uh, you know, is it of value? Is it of quality? Has it been well maintained? What is the potential if you were to move this over here and open up this over there and, you know, flow and so forth? And because we're in the profession of, of, um, of understanding and implementing uh, people's designs. lifestyles, the designs, exactly. We can, we can do that in a very quick way on the front end to just help you see the vision. Do you see what I mean? Just to understand the property's potential. You see what I mean? It's a great... Uh, oh, that's a great... That's a great service. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. And it's, it's really wonderful for us because, I mean, we, again, it's, we love the relationships that we establish with our clients. They're, they're so, um, 
they're they're so personal as i said mm -hmm. it's nice so we love to we love to see people make a good decision one that they feel great about and confident about we're here to give you that confidence so Thank yeah you. yeah good luck it's really a nice uh, nice time for you to be looking at homes okay anybody else i i have a quick question yeah please okay so austin is major dog lovers we love our pets yes yes for sure and so i would just like to get a feel for how you guys incorporate that little part of the family or big part of the family if you will you know i mean little in terms of usually size well right? that, i think that's why <laughs> i mentioned that because we had a wonderful client who um very daringly had i mean three very large dogs five dogs in total in the home um and it was a big home so it could accommodate that but I mean, you really do need to think about that. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think pets are often in many ways like children, you know, uh, performance fabrics, greatest thing to happen to design since sliced bread. Sliced you know, bread. I mean, it really is not only because they behave so well and they are so user friendly, but they also look so natural these days. I remember when I was starting out, um, you know, I mean, micro suede had kind of come on the market and and they were good, but yeah, weren't they good. weren't the, the, yeah. exactly. I mean, the colors were limited, the textures were limited, even though it's micro the durability, the durability yeah. exactly, the accessibility. <laughs> but these days, you can play with all of that, and you have so much more in terms of indoor, outdoor, you know, all of that. So I think when it comes to uh, arranging your home for your pets, keep them in mind again in reference to that lifestyle, right? What do you want to provide them? Much like you would think about what you would want to provide your, your own self, mm -hmm. your, you know, the rest of your family. And um, there are a lot of great products out there. Also, we've built, we do a lot of custom builds and we've built some great, uh, you know, kind of uh, enclosures, so that, uh, what are the crates? That are, okay. that are beautifully made, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, because these things don't have to be ugly or reupholstered dog beds or, you know, I mean, just being conscious of the size of dog or what they need to get around, being aware of corners, like don't get a coffee table that is sharp and edgy if, you know, toddlers are going to be running around or a dog is going to keep bumping into it and moving right. the things. Consider weight, consider, you know, all of those things. But but pets are a great um, great part of a home because um, they make it come alive too. It's yeah. Nice, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. So, okay. and we do love our, our, our animals in Austin. It's, it's such a friendly town. It really is. It's great. Yeah. Austin is unique, I think, you know, when it comes to a lot of different things. But one of them definitely is the animal acceptance here. I, I have been around, you know, different countries like yourself mm -hmm. and um, lived in different places. And Austin is the one place you can take dogs in yes. everywhere. And I'm not joking. That's true. I'm talking about restaurants, banks. Uh, they don't care. I mean, you know, they even have little treats waiting for them. It's very but, supportive of them. It is encouraged. That's, right. that's very true. Yes. Yeah, and I think that's why everybody's kind of got a happy, healthy attitude here. I think that's true. And I mean, you know, the same goes for, for children in the sense that Austin is extremely family oriented. Uh, I have never once thought twice about where I might take my child. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't necessarily do it at a, you know, very formal restaurant because that's not fair to other diners. But you feel very at ease. It's never very comfortable. It, exactly. It's very exactly. Helpful. But you know, the, on back on the topic of Austin, and and it is a beloved city for sure uh, by me. It's it's crazy that as a as a European, I've spent so much time here now. You know, Austin is interesting because we stay to the root of things. I I, I always say this. I think you've even heard me say this that Austin. I, I I consider we're not cutting edge. We're cutting craft. We are always at the forefront of of mom and pop, of homemade, of well-made by hand. It's it's such a nice thing to see so much pride taken in um, individualism and that, you know, what we can all do artistically and, and how we can contribute to a good community. It's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Eva, it's uh, been a pleasure having you back, and I'm so glad you guys had a chance to talk. Yes. You know, it's always great to uh, talk to someone who has such a professional design company as you thank do you we love what we yeah. do we feel so blessed and every day i love coming to work yeah. i've got a great team so it's uh it's a nice thing
So before we sign off, I want to make sure everybody can get a hold of you. Of course. So please tell everybody about uh, your website yes. and your the phone number of the company. So yes, oh, okay. sure. So we're we're on a number of social media, um, typically under Turnstile Design, but our website is uh, www.turnstileid.com, and our main office number is seven three seven three three three. Five eight zero zero. We'd love to have you give us a call, give us a chat, you know, touch base. We love hearing queries or feedback from people on our social media about what their, you know, questions they're dying to know. So we'd love to have your engagement and your interaction. Yeah, and I'd also like to point out too that Leva is uh, also a humanitarian. She does a lot of social interaction type stuff with the community as well as Quatrain Furniture, which is one of the things I want to announce um, on July 22nd. You guys don't want to miss this, so please write it down. We're going to have Burnett Market Days, and we've got 12 stores. Listen, 12 stores are opening their doors, and they're offering a, a unique experience. We're not talking about discounts here. We're talking about you get to come in and have a free experience and go from one door to another. It sounds and, great. I mean, what a nice way to kind of stroll around and get to know this Burnett Corridor because right. it's a great spot in Austin. Yeah, and so it's many brand resources. new. Yeah. There's all this new, yeah, new right. stuff happening. Um, so that's happening from 10 until 5 p.m. Yep. on Saturday, July 22nd. And also, please come in and check out all of our new stuff that we've got coming in. It should be here by June 8th. And we're located at 6555 Burnett Road, and we're in Suite 600. You can see the sign. Um, we've got a lot going on. There's going to be a lot more announcements coming up. We've got a charity auction that's also going to be happening. But that's a little ways down the line. Right now, we're going to focus on this one event. Good. Also, Gina Quatrain is actually going to be in town for our next show, and that's going to be on the fourth Thursday in June on June 22nd. You don't want to miss it at 6 p.m. You'll be able to ask her any questions. She's going to talk about how she got started and what is the intention and mission behind Quattrain Furniture. Good, good, good. Okay. It'll be nice to meet her. Look yeah. forward to it. Yeah. Well, so. some very fun events there for sure. Yeah. Again, nice to kick off summer. Okay. Good. Thanks, Leva. Thank you. Okay, bye, bye. everybody. Thank you.